Hi, my name is Jane Johnson, and I am here with, with JDJ, which is a gallery in Garrison, New York. We work, we work with Barnett Cohen, and we are exhibiting his work during the inaugural week of FAIR, which is NADA's new art fair initiative that's designed to help galleries and its partner institutions during uh, the COVID shutdowns. So I wanted to first just um, tell you a little bit about Barnett's work. I'm so glad that he can join us from his studio in Los Angeles. Hi, Barnett, how is it going? Hi. Um, and so just to remind you all of what we are seeing um, with of Barnett's work uh, during FAIR, this is the piece that we're exhibiting this week. It's a painting that's 58 by 64 inches, and it's made from found and um, just stickers, a very kind of simple mass material that's used to kind of communicate our own versions of what we think of as our identities or our brands to the world. Um, Barnett is a performance artist and also makes objects. And there's a really interesting relationship between the two sides of his practice. Language is a big part of where all of the work is coming from and um, meditations on the space between the self and, the con and our consciousness and um, what language means to us or maybe doesn't mean, how it can sort of uh, how meanings can change and language can kind of have this very active, uh, fluid role in our lives. And the internet is also a big part of that as we'll go into a little bit. So um, I'm going to let Barnett just tell us a little bit about these paintings. So he has behind him on the right, the work that we have on view in Nada in Fair. And then on the left is another work um, from the same series. So I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen so we can now enter the studio of Barnett. Hi. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, in short, um, what we're looking at here, I'll just give us a little tour of the work before I talk about it. But this is the piece for Nada. So you can kind of actually see, which is cool, which sometimes I don't get to show, is that the light kind of hits it in interesting ways because some of the material is reflective. It's also interesting because the surfaces are very flat, even though you have lots of little pieces that are overlapping one another. And um, that's a very intentional part of the way that you're making them, right? Yeah, and at the end, you can see, I'm doing this on a laptop, so one second here, but you can kind of see if you look at the, it's a sort of like, it's a really um, kind of, there's a, a poly uh, acrylic polymer that covers it up at the end. I'm dipping them in acrylic polymer before I'm placing them on the canvas. But each, um, each sticker on the can, uh, in polyurethane. Poly, po uh, polymer. Liquid polymer. Material. But yeah, so like each is dipped okay. and then it's placed on and I'm moving according to color, less so according to what each, um, each uh, sticker says or illustrates. Mm -hmm. I mean, fundamentally, I think that I'm interested primarily in, um, fundamentally, primarily in, uh, in kind of like how language or symbols can drive home a particular point, whether that might be political, related to identity, related to a kind of um, a way of seeing the world or a way of seeing yourself in the world. And what I think is really interesting for me is that how, particularly now, <clears throat> that there's a kind of flattening that happens where speech by it sort of being all kind of in the vehicle of how we experience speech is mostly online in a way when people are talking at us, to us, informing us, but that it all for me becomes the energy of that is very flattened. And so I'm trying to, in some ways, I'm not sort of like one-to-one -one mimicking that or going after that, but I'm interested in how it looks in a way or what the ob object like quality of that appears. And I feel like when you start to look at the details of this, um, you can kind of see that there's, there's sort of everything and nothing happening simultaneously. And that's, these are the titles of the piece, everything and nothing. But it's, and it's also about sort of what we experience, where we experience, there are sort of geographic components to this, but they're also just sort of like ideas, like mm -hmm. mediocre or, you know, um, just peachy or a view of the president or, you know, it's like, it really is. And then when you step out, you know, you're, you're, you know, kind of encountering color in a different way, perhaps. 
and form. What's really interesting about this piece is, these pieces are the way that they are so, um, people have such different reads of them depending on your own history, identity, things that you, um, you know, there's lots of kind of inside jokes or like Easter egg bits of information yeah. that are embedded into them that, you know, I, my version of looking at these might be very different than somebody else's than another person because of where I grew up or how old I am or what references I understand or, um, you know, what my identity is. So they kind of have this very um, interesting workshop like um, quality to them where everyone is going to kind of see some, their own version of what these works are and what the meanings are and what the associations are when they see certain phrases or um, references juxtaposed with others. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I'm interested in kind of capturing all. I mean, I have a particular kind of politics and way of thinking and seeing the world, um, but I'm interested in how that's, I'm also encountering different forms of speech and symbolism that of which language is a part um, in kind of my research. I mean, I think that the way that I find these isn't just like, I'm not just like buying stickers or collecting them. I'm actually sort of digging into what they mean and where they're from and the etymology of the language that's being used. Um, and then that kind of just gets factored into the research process. And then the application, it's kind of like two distinct practices built into one where there's this sort of a research component to finding out like, I mean, very basically the wall drug, this is, you know, that is, you see at the very top, that is a very famous pharmacy in South Dakota but you need to know that, right? And I like, or I would need to know that in making this. Mm -hmm. And you may not even need to know it in looking at it. But then in the application of the stickers um, in creating the painting, there is, um, they sort of make, it's sort of interestingly like make themselves, right? Like I sort of see a color here and I'll put it there and it'll go here. And then, and then all of a sudden I'm sort of into yellow and maybe some purple or, you know. So it's a very like, they take a long time to make, not only because of the labor involved in placing them on the canvas and then the finishing process, but also because I have to spend a long time finding them, right? right. And just the same ones. I try to really find pieces and collect pieces that are both now, but also, you know, 50 years ago. So there's, there's kind of a whole, it's like a, it's like a sort of like a story. It's like once a moment in time, it's both a moment in time, but it's also, a, kind of capturing um, some of the other stickers are, are, are quite old or vintage, right, as, as I find them. It's interesting. You can kind of think of these as kind of like a study of American sociology or um, Absolutely. politics, but just kind of like what makes us tick and the things that are important to us. Um, what's also really interesting is that you don't really use Whoops. to um, brand it. You know, you don't use, you don't have like a prevalence of which um, is also really interesting because one would think that that would be most of what you would find, um, you know, just like companies inundating you with marketing materials and objects. They really yeah. do seem much more related to um, phrases or identity-based kind of language, which is well, quite interesting. I think that's true. I'm like less interested in like the graphics and design of like, look, these are, I think that we all find ways of, I think, the term branding oneself is weird. Yeah. Very applicable, but it's also what we seem to do and how we use kind of like contemporary symbolism. And I say that broadly, but like the kind of font I might use on my Instagram profile, what I say and how I say it, you know? So right. I think to me, that's really interesting. And I think I'm really fascinated by how language is alive. So like, I was just kind of like looking at this, like, I don't know, somewhere in here, it's like, okay, boomer. I don't know. We may not be able to find it, but yeah. it's in there. And I think that that's a really funny, it's a very, I love that term because it says so much with so little and it's so current, right? And then five years from now, okay, Boomer will be kind of passe in right. a way that feels like that language is not alive, right? So I feel like I'm both looking at language from the perspective of like contemporary consciousness and I'm also looking at how thought functions from the perspective of like, I think we would have talked about this before, but 
you know, thought is not a monolith, monolith. And I feel like when I have a thought, it has a certain energy, it has a certain shape, it has a certain size, mm -hmm. it has color, it has taste. And thoughts are con like, this is constantly generating them. And they, and they feel at times, you know, like that, right? In different shapes and different sizes. Yeah. Can you take us into your kind of working area of the studio just to do you, maybe you have something in process that you can show or, or yeah, maybe sure. like some of the material to give everyone a sense of your kind of thinking behind putting it all together? Yeah. And away we go. <laughs> It's interesting thinking about how, you know, we as humans like to think of ourselves as having such a rich and layered personality and identity. And, you know, we cannot be defined by one slogan or thought or idea. Yet these stickers are basically objects that we use to brand ourselves. And everyone does it, you know, no matter your whether you're coming from like a left or right po political perspective or, you know, it's about like your status as being on the PTA of your child's school or yeah. like, like literally anything. Like we all are like somehow we're happy to just kind of like reduce ourselves into, you know, some like very easily digestible bit of information about our Personality. Well, I, yeah, that's really interesting because what I think, and then I'll show you the space, what I think is that is, is like narrative is really attractive, right? And so groupings of people and the way that we understand ourselves, and that's from a broad way of speaking about it, like my church group or the fact that I, I'm really from Georgia and I love, you know, being from Georgia or, you know, um, I support the police or I don't support the police or, you know, it's sort of like how you group, the, it's not, not group thing, but it's how you kind of group around an idea. And right. so for me, I generally stand in opposition to narrative, both in my performance work, but in my writing and also in these pieces because they are totally non-narrative, mm -hmm. right? They are about everything and nothing in a way. Yes. So, um, but yeah, so like this is, here, I'll just, let me see if I can, and this is gonna be a little, but uh, you see like, this is how I'm organizing them. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you have like, just gets, I'm doing this on a laptop, so it's a little crazy, but you see like layers and layers and layers of different kinds of stickers that I found and collected and picked up. Mm. Um, and this is kind of messy because I'm working on this piece. Right. I'll, you see they're a little bit more organized and particularly over, as we get back into here, according to color. And as they make their way towards a piece, you know, I'm gonna, this is where I start to work through the ideas and the pieces. So, you know, it's like, I'll find this and see if I can do this, you know, and that sort of looks good with that, mm -hmm. little, you know, and this color seems to work with that color. And then, you know, and then I'm kind of moving, you know, kind of, kind of through it, you know? And so it just, and they take a while, right? Cause I'm constantly finding them and, um, putting them together and researching and researching and researching. So. It's so great to see this and to see something that's also kind of partially done because the finished results have such a fantastic overall cacophony of language and image. And um, yeah, it's nice to kind of see how they can come to, how they're coming together. Yeah, yeah, it's a very, it's a, it's an interesting kind of, but there's like a kind of interesting headspace that I feel like I'm uh, getting into with a finished piece because initially my thought processes are pretty logical. Like I really need some more blue, right? Right. Or like I need this kind of blue. Um, or I need a certain like what's going on in the world, right? Like I've been finding a lot of stickers that say support Hong Kong, right? That was a couple months ago. They're still online. Or um, Joe Exotic. That was a kind of cultural zeitgeist. Yeah. So, you know, and I want to pick up on it all. And so it's kind of like finding its way to the work. Mm -hmm. But that takes, that's a very lengthy process. When I get here, I start stop looking at them for like what they sign signify one-to-one -one mm -hmm. and more like a more expansive quality of how they kind of all kind of come together. Mm. Thank you so much for inviting us into your studio. It's really great to see 
the pieces and chat with you and learn more about the process. Yeah, it was great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And Barnett's work is on view for this first week of FAIR with NADA. And um, I hope that you will check it out. Um, and thanks so much for tuning in.